Hello, everyone. Good morning to some of you and good evening to the, the, the other part. Um, welcome to our uh, latest session of our Allotreat mini webinar series. Uh, before we start, I'm John from uh, Caventia, Turkey. Uh, I'm currently overseeing the uh, Turkish operations, especially uh, the uh, aluminum surface treatments uh, section, uh, where I'm also uh, trying to organize our efforts. So today, the topic of our presentation will be uh, the ceiling and, and how we can choose the right ceiling for our application. And Ms. Uh, Kunar Option uh, will be presenting you and uh, this, this, this topic. And I have the honor to, or at least return the favor that she has been uh, hosting uh, many of our webinars, so I can host her right now. Uh, before we start, just a small reminder, you can send us your questions uh, throughout the webinar, and at the end of the webinar, we will have a Q&A session where I will organize and guide the uh, questions to Kunar. Before we start, I believe uh, a brief company overview is in order. So, uh, the company Capentia actually has a very long heritage, starting from 1927 as Parker, uh, and evolved uh, through many acquisitions. And uh, lastly, it was a part of the uh, Shemetal Group in, in Europe, uh, especially specialized uh, in a protective uh, plating uh, chemical men. And in 2000, uh, and the year 2000, the name Coventia has emerged when uh, Shemata has decided to sell uh, the plating branch of their operations. And the, the, the leading managers of Coventia have uh, purchased the company or acquired the company, and uh, the journey of Coventia as Coventia has initiated. Uh, as you can see, throughout the 2000 year, uh, they have started to grow. Uh, especially in Europe and in other uh, continents and countries uh, through mergers, but not for market entry, rather to acquire critical uh, technology. And by acquiring these technologies, like in 2017, uh, when Polytechnic was part of Preventia Group, uh, they have also accessed uh, the, the building industry. But among building industry, and the, the core business, which is automotive, uh, Coventia is active in many industries like electronics, furniture, fashion, data storage, um, connectors, and even energy. Uh, and in order to be able to be active in those segments or in all, in all of these industries, you need to be able to uh, provide your customers with a variety of products which, as we have seen, uh, has been acquired through technology transfer by acquisitions. Like, as you can see, still the core business of Preventia is the protective branch uh, against corrosion. Uh, but in our portfolio, we present to our customers decorative, functional, uh, precious metals, or even aluminum surface treatment chemicals that are uh, providing our customers uh, the required properties on their surfaces. So when we talk about the, the core business, which is automotive, and we know that the productive is uh, the leading actor there, but also you can see that there are many applications uh, in various uh, parts of the car that are partially decorative uh, or they are functional. And Coventia is proud to say that uh, we are the third leading uh, chemical supplier in the world in terms of uh, plating. And uh, the core business, uh, which is related to the automotive, it's even possible to supply almost everyone. So when we return to the uh, conscious decision of Preventia entering the, the, the aluminum surface treatment or aluminum segment is actually driven with uh, by one major uh, player, which is the e-mobility. You can see that currently the biggest challenge in front of uh, rolling out the e-mobility is the range of the uh, electrical cars. 
because of the uh, high weight versus low energy uh, ratio of the, of the batteries currently, the range of the cars are significantly shorter when you look at the other alternatives, which are chemically driven, chocolate being the favorite. Uh, so therefore, it is not as easy to um, develop the or even further improve the uh, battery technology rather than uh, making the cars lighter in order to overcome the range problem. Because uh, all the OEMs, through many different reasons, uh, carbon emissions being one of them, have been trying to build the cars uh, in a more lightweight fashion. And you can see the trend of lightweight materials uh, being more increasingly used uh, throughout many years, and they almost tripled their usage in the car. Therefore, in 2017, Coventia made a conscious decision of acquiring Polytechnic, uh, which me and both Ms. Option were uh, employees of, uh, where we were specialized in developing and, and uh, also manufacturing aluminum surface treatment chemicals, whether, it, whether they are before uh, anodizing or for, for passivation or uh, as a pretreatment prior to the powder coating. And you can see that Coventia is using its um, global footprint. Uh, you can see from this map, wherever there is an OEM, there is a Coventia factory and an expert lab in order to give customers uh, technical service and supply the right products as with uh, aluminum surface treatment uh, by using the quality standard uh, ISO 169 uh, or ISO 9001. Uh, at its all production site. Furthermore, after the acquisition, um, Coventia has started being even more active in uh, aluminum surface treatment, not just automotive or aerospace, but including architectural, uh, by being members of associations like AAC in the United States, IAB in Turkey, Power in Germany, Adal in France, Aital in Italy, and many more, uh, where we are proud to say that we can supply our customers almost anywhere in the world, as we have seen, uh, by using our global footprint, uh, ensuring the quality and delivering them the, the, the products that are uh, up to the task, uh, which is approved by, by uh, international organizations like Fallen Out of Colico. Well, when we come back to our <clears throat> webinar today. Uh, I would like to briefly introduce to you uh, Ms. Option. She has been with our company since 2014 and, and being an employee of Coventia since 2016 or end of 2016 after the acquisition. She's a PhD candidate in material science and in electrochemistry uh, and she is leading our uh, R&D efforts uh, in, in Turkey in Tuzla uh, as an expert uh, since I believe a year and a half now. Uh, so right now she will be presenting you, which is one of her uh, favorite subjects, uh, how to choose the right uh, sealing technology. Okay, Pnar, please go ahead. It's yours. Okay. Thank you for a nice introduction. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. So this webinar, this Improve Your Feeling by Ceiling webinar is the last webinar of our mini webinar series. And we already discussed about the pretreatments, anodizing, coloring. So today we are going to talk about ceiling. As we all know, aluminum preferred by any applica uh, engineering application because of the uh, mechanical strain, chemical stability, low cost and low density. However, aluminum is an amphoteric material, so we have to protect it against the alkaline or acidic environment, which can be done by sealing. So, anodizing is an electrochemical process for creating an oxide layer on the surface. And the sulfur customization far most important and common anodizing process in the industry because of the unique characteristic of the process. It provides very variety range of thickness, 
and also the properties of the coating. Uh, I mean, uh, it's a clear coat that can be easily colored. However, the oxide layer improves the corrosion resistance of bare aluminum. The nature of the oxide layer is porous, and this porous structure tends to absorb the chemicals from the environment. That's why we need to cut, uh, cut the connection of uh, pores and the environment, which can be well done by using sealing. So before continuing with the further information, I would like to remind you a couple things. Uh, as we discussed before, the anodizing is a really complex procedure because each step affects other steps. For example, if you have a problem with the coloring, you should not check the coloring tank itself. You should consider the problem may cause by pretreatment, anodizing, and even sealing. So also, this is another good example for the complexity of the procedure. Uh, actually, corrosion, etching, polishing, and even anodizing is the different part of same phenomena. So if we have uncontrolled, slow dissolution, so it means we have corrosion. But by controlling the dissolution rate, we can uh, homogeneously etch the surface and we use this etching as a pretreatment. By increasing the etching rate, we can polish the surface. And even on a dyzing, we have to dissolve the aluminum to make it oxide. Uh, the other topic is the structure of oxide layer. Uh, in the literature, aluminum oxide defined as well-ordered honeycomb structure, which is not uh, the situation in the real life. Uh, because of the magnitude and the production speed, we end up with really aquatic structure, which may be uh, problematic for post treatments like um, sealing and coloring. So because of this complexity, uh, Coventia has a unique approach to all procedure. So we are not only focused single step, each step, we also consider the entirety of the process. The substrate should be utilized and conditioning uh, to obtain best uh, base material possible for the post treatment. So we have to choose right cleaning, etching and desmat to provide good quality. And after that, after the conditioning the surface substrate, we're continuing with the right analyzing, coloring, and sealing chemistry. Additionally, the analyzing uh, complex procedure, and it's one reason of this is also the aluminum itself, I mean aluminum element. Uh, we need the silicon addition for the increased uh, tactability, uh, permeability, and mechanical strain. But these rich alloy zones can be problematic for the oxide growth. It can be inhibit the oxide growth. So this conditioning of the substrate, again, is critical. And according to our boss and our previous uh, webinars, these are the R&D team. And I assume the angry one is me. Dr. Janakil already mentioned about the complexity of the uh, coloring mechanism. And also he gave, inf gave information about the relationship between the coloring and the pretreatment. So after this real quick recap, we can continue with the sealing procedure. As we discussed, aluminum is an amphoteric material. We should protect it against the environment. Uh, both alkaline and acidic environment is problematic. And the aluminum oxide provides a certain amount of corrosion resistance for aluminum. Uh, and thanks to porous structure of aluminum uh, under oxide layer, we can color the surface by using organic dye or inorganic salts. But again, uh, because of these uh, pores, uh, we have big zones and we have to cut the connection between the pores and the environment which is the sealing in our case. Uh, but also uh, sealing step is also complicated and tricky. We have to be careful about smart formation on the surface. We would like to uh, stable uh, color. Uh, we would like to high corrosion resistance. So all of these properties can be adjusted by using the right sealing. 
So we are all agree we need a ceiling and we need to in increase the corrosion resistance of the horizontal coxite layer. But also the important question, how do you want to plug the pores? So this is a really important question. And for the answer to this question, we have to um, take consider the performance criteria, what is the requirement, uh, line capabilities, and environmental regulations. In the industry, there is a three different type of ceiling. Uh, the first one is hot ceiling. Historically, this one is the oldest one and well known. The main advantage of the hot ceiling is wastewater management uh, because mainly they contain organic molecules. Uh, but the hot ceiling came along with high energy costs. And the medium temperature seal is the rock star for the organic dyes. It minimizes the color bleeding. Uh, it gives a superior corrosion performance, but again, this is a compression, so we have to be careful about the sealing rate. And the cold seal is easy to use, easiest to use, and the energy consumption is lower than the other two. But again, uh, maybe nickel usage is a problem for your production, so we have to be considered the environment and health issues. So. Uh, hot sealing, we need basically just hot water and temperature. But if we try to perform the hot sealing in a DI water, we came up with really bad result. Why? Uh, because the pH resistance or pH stability of the bed is critical for the good performed sealing layer. For that, we have to use some sealing additive like LML seal 996, 902, or 907. All of these three provide different properties and advantage. So in hot water sealing, we try to convert the aluminum oxide to hydroxide. Thanks to volume expansion, we plug the surface, of course. So by using the right additive, we, can, we obtain pH stability and also we obtain homogeneous sealing. And the second type of the sealing is cold sealing. Uh, in this time, we try to create a mixture uh, oxide layer on the surface, mixed oxide layer on the surface, which contains nickel, fluoride, oxide, and aluminum. So, the main advantage of the cold seal is the energy consumption and treatment time. Uh, and also it provides a superior sealing performance. However, there is a several type of the cold seals. For example, first one is the two component liquid version, uh, such as Alumal Seal CS96LF. And this component, this chemistry provides a unique control on the whole system. You can adjust the nickel and fluoride concentrations separately. The other option is the single component liquid, like LML seal CS90OL. Uh, this is a single component product which uh, contains nickel and fluoride combination. Uh, it is really easy to use, and the smart formation or sludge formation is less than the other. And the other version is the Alumal Seal CS 967. This is the powder uh, version of the cost seal. It is very good for the small uh, applicators, uh, easy to use, and the consumption of this chemistry is really low. And the third one is the mid-temperature sealing. Uh, this time, the nickel hydroxide formation helps to create the bromide. And the most well-known uh, mid-temperature seal is nickel acetate base. However, it's not the only case. We also offer different type of the mid-temperature seals. Uh, the Alamo seal M2S 900 or 909 is the nickel acetate or the nickel acetate base ceilings and they provide a unique opportunity to control the uh, ceiling weight. Additionally, they are minimizing the color bleeding. But sometimes nickel usage is problematic for uh, the lines. 
That's why we have two other options for the anodizers. The first one is Oma Steel MTS 110, which is a nickel-free metal-based uh, mid-temperature steel. And also there is another option which contains just organic. These two also provides unique properties, but it not give the best technical solution against the organic dyes. So now we all we are already know the selling types and product catalog. So we can continue with the how we can choose the right selling for our production. For this, we have to answer four or five questions. The first five, uh, the first question is, do you need selling? Normally and generally, answer is yes, but there is a one exception, which is the hard anodizing or industrial anodizing. Uh, the main request is the wear resistance. If you're not dealing with the high wear resistance, in this case, you have to use some sealing. And if the question's answer is yes, which requirement you should accomplish should be the second question. So do you need any alkaline resistance? Uh, do you working with, are you working with some organic dyes? So the second, the question is water quality. Some impurities in the water, like phosphate, fluoride, or silicate can be inhibit the sealing formation. And also hard water needs a special additive. And the third questions are line capacities, the production speed, line structure, and percentage of the color samples are critical for the choosing the right seal. For example, do you have uh, any additional racing plan? Do you have any heating capability? So by asking this question, you can choose the right sailing time. And the last question is energy consumption. In some cases, the cost of heating is really, really critical for the selection. Uh, so we already mentioned about the customer requirements. Uh, there are lots of different quality tests. And uh, one of the quality label organization is Qualnot, which defined 20 different quality tests for anodized aluminum. If you look in detail, uh, all of these tests, tests related directly or indirectly with sealing. For example, mass loss, dye spot, admittance, corrosion resistance, all of these tests directly related with sealing. Uh, I think you are already uh, familiar with this kind of test, uh, but Qualnot or the generally customers, final users, ask for three major corrosion tests. It can be uh, acidic acid or natural salt spray test. Also, uh, for the functional analyzing, uh, micro hardness, wear resistance, electrical breakdown voltage can be important. And all of these test or the perform criteria uh, directly affected by sailing itself. Okay, all of these fancy uh, analysis method quality tests are well and good, but there is another critical test method too. I think all of the anodizer uh, are familiar with this method. So you can use this method daily basis and you can use this test uh, only for every flight form, almost. So this is touching. So by touching the surface, you can understand the quality of ceiling layer. Uh, actually, I would like to uh, express how I feel against the ceiling. Uh, actually, ceiling is the one of the most challenging topic for R&D because the quality tests are too long. Uh, we have to produce a lot of sample, understand the bad behavior is tricky. So that's why the ceiling is one of the most challenging topic. Uh, but there is a one easy understanding method uh, for the R&D people too, touching. Uh, by touching the surface, we can understand the ceiling works well or not. Actually, I had a, such an experience once we are in a customer uh, visit and we are at the line, one of the operator just take the samples from the uh, flight bar, uh, firstly check the color and then start to touch it. 
And after the touching, he said immediately, we have to rework these parts without any ADT, without any uh, scratch test or something else. So by touching, he understands the ceiling grade is not good enough. So by touching, you can send the ADT results. If it's sticky, you, it means you have poor ADT results. But it can be smoothy and silky. It means you got it. You got it right. So, uh, of course, sealing is one of the challenges part of the anodizing. Let's look at these challenges. We define three major challenges. First one is compatibility with coloring. The second one is the controlling sealing grade. And finally, alkaline resistance. The first topic is controlling the sealing grade. Uh, as we discussed, by touching, you can understand the sealing grade. If it's sticky, poor sealing grade, low sealing grade. If it's powdery, it means you create a, a overseal surface on the aluminum. So that's why sealing grade is critical for quality control and appearance. To understand the sealing grade differences between the different sealing type, in our laboratory, we conduct an uh, experiment. We create a no seal surface as a reference, and then we continue with the cold seal and two different medium temperature seal processes. If we look at bigger magnitude, uh, you can see the pores right over here. The cold seal is the face, uh, fastest one uh, because of the nature of the sealing, obviously. And if you compare the mid temperature, two different mid temperature seal, they have different sealing grade. MTS 900 is the fastest one, faster one, uh, but MTS 909 provides a unique opportunity to control the sealing grade and the parameters. So when you try to choose the right uh, ceiling, you should consider the requirements and the final goal. For example, if you try to plug the surface uh, after the organic dye, probably MTS 100 is the best option for you because of the higher ceiling grade. But if you use the uh, M uh, middle seal temperature as a single step uh, electrocolored uh, ceiling, so this time MTS 909 is a better option because it gives you control on the surface and the performance. So the second topic we would like to discuss compatibility with coloring and sealing. Uh, when we try to discuss the coloring mechanism of uh, endococcite there, actually it's really complex because we have a reflective base metal. And then we create a porous, well-ordered uh, oxide structure, which can be uh, felt by using organic dye or inorganic salt. In this case, you can end up with organic molecules or metal or metal oxides. And then we have to add some top layer because of the corrosion protection. And the sealing's optical properties affected on the final color. So if the oxide layer and the ceiling layer is, are not transparent enough, we only perceive the ceiling layer's properties, not the real color. So more, more transparency means more vivid and precise color. So to understand the uh, mechanism and the optical properties of the oxide layer in our laboratory, uh, we conduct a uh, uh, experiment. In this time, we use double step anodizing because this is the only way to obtain a well ordered structure. Uh, actually, it's a really basic and easy method. Uh, we start with the first anodizing, then we remove the um, oxide layer by using the chromic acid. And after the selective etching, we continued with uh, second anodizing. Thanks to this second anodizing, we obtain real order structure. Uh, electro coloring and ceilings were performed. And finally, to understand the optical properties of, on, of uh, oxide layer and the ceiling layer, we stripped the uh, base metal by using copper chloride. After the stripping, we end up with freestanding aluminum oxide and ceiling layer. 
So uh, the transparency of oxide layer is critical and in the literature and our previous uh, experiment, we obtain really transparent oxide and ceiling layers. The reflectance of the whole system are too low, approximately 5%, and the transparency, which is good for our case, approximately 13%. But I would like to remind you, this is, the, this is an experiment and this is not the real life situation. So to understand the real life behavior of the ceiling and oxide layer, uh, we just make a simple common anodizing and we continue with ceiling, which be uh, hot or cold. So this is the comparison between the different type of ceiling. As you can see, no seal uh, under the coxite layer is the most transparent one. And the hot seal is, when we compare the cold seal, hot seal has a superior transparency. And also, uh, we observed that the under coxite layer thickness also affected on the uh, optical properties of the whole system. When the thickness increases, reflectance will be decreased. And also, the cold seal has a uh, lowest transparency of uh, when we compare the oldest tree. So, however, the real idea is not uh, the hot seal is the best because normally hot seal is really, really complex and hard to use or difficult to use uh, because as we discussed, we need a real good gauge stability. We have to control the sealing rate. We need a temperature. So we have to choose right hard, uh, hot seal additive. In our case, this is Olomar seal 907. I don't want to bore you by using the, some uh, optical and physical terms, uh, but the uh, additive that you use are really important for the optical properties of the final product. Normally, the electrocolor samples um, the trickiest one to seal. Uh, by using the hot seal, we end up with the rainbow effect or some smudge formation. But thanks to 907, uh, we can create a clear, vivid black samples. But again, uh, we have to choose the uh, sealing according to our requirements and line capacities. Uh, if you're working with uh, organic dyes, in this time, the uh, cold seal or hot seal is not, are not the best options. Uh, we recommend it to you using a nickel acetate based mid temperature seal. By using the MTS 909, you can reduce the color bleeding and also reduce the uh, wastewater load. So, when you try to choose right sealing and right sealing chemistry, please take consider. Uh, do you apply organic dye or electrocoloring dye? Uh, or do you have uh, DI water problems? Do you have silicates, phosphate? So uh, every uh, ceiling type has different advantage and disadvantage. And the last topic that we would like to talk about is alkaline resistance. Actually, nowadays is a really hot topic because of the OEMs. Uh, OEMs ask for a really uh, high pH resistance because of the car wash detergent. Uh, normally, aluminum oxide are only stable between the 4 to 9 pH, uh, but OEMs and the functional analyzing request more. That's why they define different solutions uh, like 13.5 or 12.5, and also we have to accomplish the pH 1 resistance. In normal life, in industry, cold seal or hot seal cannot pass this test alone. So that's why applicators use uh, double seal combinations. It can be cold seal plus hot seal, and it can be cold seal plus mid-temperature seal. Of course, double seal performed well, but it's not the real, uh, real solving, uh, problem solving. So this is the 13.5 pH uh, test result of all of these uh, ceilings. As you can see, we clearly see the dipping marks, we see the itching. So by using regular uh, ceiling or the combinations, we cannot accomplish this request. 
That's why, as Coentia, we create uh, a unique and new chemistry. Uh, we called it alumacil pH 913 A and B. This is a two-step procedure. Why? Because we would like to create a real complex ceramic type coating on the surface. Thanks to that ceramic type of coating, we can pass all of the uh, OEM requirements. As you can see, this is the regular uh, seal sample and this is the alkaline resistance seal performance. As you can see, we improve the alkaline resistance uh, much more further. If we compare the all performance tests of cold seal, hot seal, double seal, and alkaline resistance seal, as you can see, alkaline resistance seal gives a good result even at copper accelerated sulfur tests. Also, it provides uh, pH resistance between the 1 to 13.9. So, as a conclusion, uh, now you can answer all of these four questions. Uh, do you need sealing? Probably yes. And if you need a sealing, what is the custom requirements and what is the water quality? Uh, can you apply any hot seal or you should apply cold seal? Is this too expensive to hit the uh, hot seal? So all of these questions are critical to choose right sealing type for your production. So the right sealing can be hot seal, cold seal, mid-temperature seal, and all of these three have advantage and disadvantage. So as we discuss, touching is really simple, fastest, easiest, and common uh, analysis method for the ceiling. Uh, actually, as an R&D, we always touch every sample that we produce, even if it is etching sample. So we always touch and we try to figure out the AD to result of that sample. Actually, we have a superior test method too. If the all R&D people touch the surface and there is no fingerprints, smooth formation and smoky, uh, smoothie, uh, then we take the samples and go to one of the, our colleagues, which has the, uh, he, she has the oiliest finger ever, and she touched for, for us. And if uh, the sample passed this test, we're good. So as Coentia, we urge you to select the right ceiling or improve your ceiling. So thank you for listening and especially would like to thank you all of the R&D team, especially Mr. Summers. Uh, he is put lots of <laughs> ceiling project. Thank you again. Well, Tanar, uh, first of all, beautiful presentation. Uh, I know you must be a little tired. This is the second session and you have beautifully uh, explained all the little details. I just want to uh, express one or, or open one subject is that um, generally uh, I, I think it's, it's very valuable to see that we can use science to describe a phenomenon that we all are seeing. So whenever we do the uh, anodization, the first thing we do is just look at the sample, if it is looking good, aesthetically okay or not. And the second thing is that we are touching it. And by, by looking all of these um, cool SEM pictures, you can literally see and track down rather than a, a, a ADP test or a stain test, what is happening on the surface. Because on one side, anodization is a process that has been widely used since 1911 but on the other side because of its non-afore structure it is very hard to track or see what is actually happening on the surface and I believe uh, on one side it is very challenging to develop uh, ceiling chemistries but on the other side it's also cool because then you can literally go uh, and start investigating and you can prove uh, that that the problem with the fingerprint is, is due to oversealing or uh, the problem with the haze is is due to uh, um, lack of organics, as as you said. So um, I was a little skeptical about the, the 
title, but right now it's it's uh, it is describing us very well because all of us, the tech, the sales team, the the tech support team, the R&D team, uh, it's it's occupational hazard. We are touching everything in order to understand if it is okay. Or not. Definitely. <laughs> so, okay. Before we start with the Q and A session, um, especially uh, due to the uh, COVID and, and pandemic, we cannot be uh, with you physically as much as we want, but we are very active in social media. Please do follow us in LinkedIn and in, in Facebook. Uh, we would be publishing a lot of product news, new products, and, and recent developments of our uh, of our new processes. Okay, let's uh, let's start with the with the questions. So uh, we, we received about uh, 10, 11 questions, and I tried to uh, formalize and, and group them together so that we can finish up uh, in a timely manner. The first question, the, the, the first group of questions actually consists of few, four questions, are mainly related to the hot sealing process. So the partially the, the problem is, is so uh, why this fingerprinting or the sticky uh, feeling is, is, is happening, plus uh, what is the smut consisting of that is happening in our uh, hot seal? And I would like to connect this question to uh, another question that one of us, uh, someone from our audience has asked it, what are the main differences of uh, of the different hot seal additives? You, you have shown three. So uh, maybe Pinar, you can uh, also combine this with, with how we develop these chemistries, why it's challenging. So uh, give a, maybe a, a, a summary of that. Okay. Uh, actually, at the, uh, first of all, I would like to describe why it's the key. Uh, because of the porous structure, we already mentioned about uh, uh, the oxide layer tend to absorb the chemicals uh, because of the capillary effect. Uh, so the oil, water, everything can be uh, plugged in the uh, oxide structure. That's why it feels sticky if we not cover them up properly. So this is the reason behind the sticky, stickiness. Uh, and the second one, I believe the smut formation. Uh, actually, the smut formation is quite opposite of the stickiness. Uh, if we over seal the surface, we end up with dusty finish. Each can, it can be uh, aluminum hydroxide, or if we discuss about uh, cold seal, it can be aluminum fluoride and nickel fluoride. Uh, and also, if we back to hot seal, the hot seal is the really time dependent, temperature dependent, and pH dependent process. So we have to control all of these three. So one of these things is missing, and also uh, one of these things missing, we end up with poor sealing or over sealing. So because of the defect on the surface oxide layer, the sealing grade, all of these pores are not the same. Thanks to using uh, or by using the right additive, we can even up the surface uh, and we can inhibit the smut formation. I already uh, mentioned about two different sealing additives. All of them have different uh, properties. For example, 996 is the best option for the hot water application. If you have a, a hot water problem, the 996 is the most stable uh, additive such a water. Uh, and it improves the pH resist, uh, stability of the hard waters. And uh, the second one, 907, is the best, uh, maybe best uh, option for the uh, big and uh, fastest production because the uh, belt life is much more longer than the others and it provides a cage stability. And 907 provides a transparent uh, finish which helps to provide a real deep black or electrocolored samples. So all of this tree has different properties. Uh, we develop such a different products because all of the customer have different uh, pro uh, production line and different requirements. Uh, for example, some of the customers has a rinsing after sealing, so it changed the bat life. And some of the customer even not have a proper heating system. So that's why we came up with uh, such a different sailing additives. OK, 
Okay. Is there anything I forgot? No, perfectly well uh, addressed all the issues. Now a, a fast question. Um, the, the, the nickel three uh, medium temperature ceiling, is it compatible with uh, quality out uh, applications or do you have the approval? Yes, for organic pavement temperature seal, we already have a colnet approval. Uh, actually, according to the colnet regulation, uh, if you don't use nickel fluoride or the DI water sealing types, you have to be applied for the colnet approval. So MTS 960 uh, pass all of the colnet tests and we have the approval. Okay, uh, then another question group. Uh, the first one is um, when we're talking about hard anodizing, or you mentioned the wear resistance, uh, most likely it is related to the functional side, but uh, when do you not seal, or do we have to seal all the time? That was two questions that asked in a different way, and then maybe it is worth combining them. So are all the nickel acetate seals you mentioned uh, okay to use for mil spec or what are the differences in between them? Okay. Uh, firstly, uh, if you're doing a functional dyeing and if the main request is wear resistance, so maybe you should not use the sealing at all because the aluminum oxide wear resistance and hardness is much more superior than the aluminum hydroxide or other oxide structure. So that's why uh, sometimes regulations say, uh, please don't use, not please, do not use any sealing. But if it is not the case, if you need a corrosion protection, if the service life is important, then you have to apply the right sealing. Actually, uh, Milsepec is a really interesting uh, spec uh, specification for us because they're asking for both wear resistance and both corrosion resistance but in this case nickel acetate based version is the best option because it's provide a unique oxide layer structure which came came along with the wear resistance and uh, corrosion resistance and also uh, we have two different uh, mid, uh, nickel state mid temperature seal MTS 900 and MTS 909. Uh, as we said, the ceiling grade are a bit different. Uh, 909 provides a unit control on the, all of the ceilings and 900 is, can be applicable for the male spec and it's the best option for the plug the uh, oxide layer porous. Is there any other questions? Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. This perfectly well answered. The only part where I started to laugh is that uh, I have not heard a specification saying, please, <laughs> they are more yes, yes, in a dominant. <laughs> exactly. I'm so, too naive. Let us, <laughs> exactly. So uh, let us continue. Well, with, since we are at the subject of medium temperature ceiling, uh, one of our uh, spectators has asked, well, you say medium temperature, but I see that you're talking about 80 degrees Celsius. So quite high, well, isn't it maybe wrong to say medium temperature or a little confusing maybe? Uh, actually, I never thinking about it, but uh, let me try to answer it. Uh, normally the cold, uh, hot seal is the oldest one, it's the first sealing that ever applied, I believe, and it performed at 100 centigrade Celsius degree. We need temperature, humidity, and pH and it performed at 100, the highest temperature for all of these sailing times. And we have cold seal, which is obviously the coldest one. It performed at room temperature around 25 to 35 centigrade Celsius. And the mid-temperature seal uh, performed at 8 to 5 centigrade Celsius degrees. So this is the middle of these two options. And also it provides you a generally uh, reduction of cost. So I know we're thinking about the uh, why we call the medium temperature seal, but this is what I believe. And um, if I make a comment, I, I would say also 
uh, looking at the energy consumption perspective because mm -hmm. uh, you need much more energy to boil the water uh, instead of getting it to 80 degrees Celsius. Maybe in terms of energy, it's the midway, but yes. for sure it's, it, it is interesting to, yes. Okay, now one of the favorite questions, uh, and I believe tied to a funny story before we go to our last question is, well, you mentioned about the alkaline resistance, and if it is so good, why we are not using all the same seal? Uh, and I would say, well, are there no drawbacks that you have ever had? Uh, yes, there are, actually. So, uh, to figure out this obstacle or the disadvantages, it's a bit uh, difficult for us because uh, we work in the lab and then we go one of our customer who wants to use such a ceiling and uh, they they make make the first slide for no problem which is a natural color uh, the ad2 results uh, dye spot test and alkaline resistance are perfect then they decided to use uh, make some black colored samples and they they have a master sample, obviously, and when they try to match to this two samples, we not match with the master sample. So they decided to rework the alkaline resistance samples, which will be not possible because of the structure of the oxide layer. Uh, they try to strip it by using the alkaline edge path. So it's really not working not work so this is the main challenging of the alkaline resistance seal uh, it's really consistent uh, seal type it's like ceramics uh, but the, it, it decreases the chance of reversibility revert chance and the other one uh, it may be a problem uh, this is the two-step sealing if you're not have enough space, uh, so it can be a problem for the make up the alkaline resistance seal tank. Thank you. Uh, now to our last question. Uh, one of our audiences asked, are you sure we can predict the sealing quality by touching? Uh, I'm well, quite is, sure. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it, you know, after a while, because you, you touch all the time, you, you not only touch, but while you're doing it, you also listen and, and start guessing the, the, the surface rough. Uh, and for sure, you need to have enough samples, enough time to, to predict. Of course, it is not an exact science. And that's why we need all those tests in order to you know, express in a mathematical way. But still, uh, I'm, I'm quite sure that especially our, our, our experienced lab technicians, they are very on point of uh, of, of whether the, the, something went wrong or everything is okay. Because as, as Mar, you, you beautifully said, it, it's very difficult to develop the seals because you need to do a lot of samples uh, in order to test and eliminate the standard deviation. So therefore, uh, after doing one thing so many times, you can, you know, you become like a gecko, very sensitive yeah. fingertips. Yes, exactly. Okay. Actually, uh, this is the uh, combination of the experience and the science. Uh, at the beginning, by touching, I cannot understand anything. But then we compare, we know the ADT result, we know the dye spot test, we know the SEM images. And time by time, you get used to understand the sailing quality by touching. And believe me, lots of the operator do the touching tests in their line. Whether they like it or not, it, it's second nature. So, and again, uh, you, it's one of the most uh, interesting parts for me that um, we change the surface, we develop new chemistry, and then we can, or we have the capability to literally look at the surface and, and what is happening in a nanoscale. And well, compliment to our R&D team, and thank you for this presentation. Thank you. So I would like to remind you and also thank you to attending the, uh, to our webinar uh, and spending your time with us. I hope uh, that it was also interesting for you. Uh, if you have any additional questions, uh, please do not hesitate to email us. And if you need the presentation, 
uh, we will also forward the presentation to you. Um, and we hope to see you in person very soon. Uh, and with the vaccination going on, uh, hopefully uh, we will be over the COVID phase rather sooner than later. Thank you. Thank you for attending. Thank you. All right, bye-bye.